I'm a Z main for many years and a lot of you guys probably know me for making various Z guides. Today I decided to make something different. Instead of making short Z tutorials, I realized I should make something that teaches you everything you need to know about Z. And that's why I decided to make this video to give you guys a complete Z guide that you can come back to as many times as you want and learn something new from it. After you are done watching this video, you will know everything that you need to know to master Z. So the goal of this video is to show you how you can win games with none other than Z. At the end of this video, you will know how you can make the difference and carry games with the Shadow Master. The video is going to be divided into many sections. I made it like that so you can skip to some sections that matter more to you. Before you start learning about Zed, it's important that you know why all of us Zed mains play him. Not only is he extremely fun to play, but he is a really strong champion to play in solo queue. Two biggest Zed strengths are mobility and damage. He is a very mobile champion and deals a lot of damage. One thing that differentiates him from other assassins in the game is that he actually scales better than any of them. Late game Zed is a totally different beast. It's so hard to catch him because of his slow cooldown mobility spells and he has high single target burst damage. He can even deal a lot of AoV damage in teamfights. So as the game goes Zed becomes only stronger, which makes him a super good pick in solo queue. One more thing that is important to know is that Zed is a very very complex champion. You can do so many things with Zed and it's very hard to choose the right move. That's why learning him is not easy, but at the end it will be worth it because he is for sure one of the most fun champions in the entire league. Zed can use three type of runes, Electrocute, First Strike or Conqueror. That is probably very confusing and you might be asking yourself, but which rune page should I use then? Well, that comes down to three different factors. First is the meta, second is the matchup you're playing against, and third is your preference, your preferred playstyle. The standard rune page that you can use is definitely Electrocute. The rune is good for poking and short trades. It's an early game rune that allows you to win your lane and snowball the game out of that lead. Taking Electrocute is pretty risky though, because if you fall behind early, it's hard to come back. It's a high risk, high reward rune. But I definitely recommend going Electrocute into some matchups. I always go this rune page into Leblanc for example. The reason why is because first strike isn't so easy to proc on her and you can't take extended fights against her with Conqueror since she can just dash out. So the only option is to take short trades or all in her and that's where Electrocute shines. The most consistent rune page on the other hand is first strike. It basically always guarantees you that you will earn some gold in laning phase. It's pretty good in lane for poking and in late game for bursting people down. I love going this room page into mages that are not so easy to kill because they have shields or other abilities that help them survive, for example against Orianna, Lux, Ari and so on. Conqueror is definitely one of my favorite room pages. I like to run it together with Scorch and Nimbus Cloak because it can lead to a solo kill a lot of the times. There are two aspects of that room page. The right side of that room page will allow you to win early game and solo kill your opponents if you play it right and the left side of the room page will allow you to be super strong in the late game and carry team fights. It's basically a super good rune page versus any melee champion that you play against in mid lane. You can take it against champions like Yasuo, Galio, Diana, Silas and so on. It's even good against some mages like Veigar, Talia and Syndra. Basically when they use their only CC ability you can just run them down with Conquer and sometimes you can even kill them in the early game if they're not careful. If you are a new Z player, I recommend trying every rune page that I talked about today and stick to just one that suits your playstyle. So first just play one rune page all the time. If you get really good with Z, I recommend using all three rune pages depending on what you play against. Your item choices with Z will depend on three main factors. First is your rune choice. Second 
is your state in the game. And when I say state, I mean if you are ahead or behind. And third is what champions you are playing against. First, let's talk about the very early game items. You have three different options, Doran Shield, Doran's Blade or Longsword. Personally, I like to go Doran Shield if I play against champions with extreme poke that is very hard to dodge. For example, Victor, Orianna, Lux, Ari and so on. I got Doran's Blade mostly against melee champions. The reason why is because you can get many more auto attacks on minions against melee champions in mid lane and on that way you can utilize lifesteal a lot from Doran's Blade. I buy it against Yasuo, Galio, Silas and so on. In all other cases I just go Longsword and Triple Potions. The reason why Longsword is actually good is because you can get your first item quicker. I go Longsword against champions that you can kill in laning phase pretty consistently. That is Talia, Syndra, Leblanc, Corky and so on. The best first item that you can generally buy with Zed is definitely Eclipse. I recommend going that item first in almost every game. The best build path for that item is that you actually buy triple longsword and pickaxe. Then you can finish Warhammer or if you have enough gold finish the whole item. The rest of your build will depend on many things. For example, if you are playing Conqueror Zed, your build should look something like that. You can also change Cyrilda for Black Cleaver because Cleaver is actually pretty fucking good with Conqueror Z. But if you are going for Strike or Electrocute, your build will look different. If you are ahead, feel free to go Voltaic because that item will allow you to extend your lead even more. If you keep getting kills, your build path should look something like this. Yumus is very good for snowballing your lead even more. That item will allow you to do many more picks and will allow you to be everywhere on the map. But let's say that after buying Eclipse things kinda go slower and you don't get so many kills. The consistent build at that point will look something like this. In that build you will have a lot of ability haste and late game you will be a monster. Also Hydra can help you farm more and get back into the game easier. Profane Hydra is also a really good team fighting item with Zed. And that's basically how you build items with Zed. Of course you can do some other variations in that build. For example, if you are playing against a shield or support, you can freely go Serpent's Fang. If the enemy team starts stacking a lot of armor early on, feel free to buy armor penetration as your third item. Recently I discovered that going Ignite and Teleport with Zed is really good and hear me out why. Teleport is a must take in mid lane. If the enemy mid lane has teleport and you don't, you are already in a big disadvantage. It's really important that you have it so you can match the tempo of your opponent so it's a must take. So basically you want to take teleport every game. It's just a really broken summoner spell and mid laners are gonna keep taking it until Riot nerfs it. The only thing that will change is ignite or flash. I basically always take Ignite and Teleport when I go Conquer because Ignite is super good with Nimbus Cloak and will allow you to make many solo kills in laning phase. I also go Ignite with Electrocute and First Strike when I play against champions that I know Zed can easily kill. But against champions that Zed cannot easily kill in laning phase I just go Flash and play for late game. And that's how you should choose your summoner spells basically. But ultimately it really depends on your preference. If you prefer going Ignite every game, just go Ignite every game. If you prefer having Flash every game and you really need it, just go Flash. Whatever brings you the most success. I'm not gonna explain what each ability of Zed does because most of you guys know it, but what I am going to explain in this segment is things that you might didn't know and of course some tricks that you can do with Zed. So let's start with the most basic trick. Your shadow slows if you hit enemies with your E. But Z does not slow when he damages an enemy with E. But there is one thing that you get when you hit enemies with shadow slash. Instead of slowing enemies, your W cooldown gets lower by 2 seconds, which is huge. And it works for each enemy you hit. So if you hit 3 enemies at once, you reduce your W cooldown for 6 seconds. Keep in mind that your shadows only slow, they don't reduce cooldowns. Always use your shadows to come back faster to lane. You can use them while you are regenerating HP, then swap at the last second. 
On that way your W is going to come up way sooner when you get back to lane. One thing that you can also do is place your W on this spot behind the turret when you just need 8 gold before buying an item. Go back to base, buy it and then swap. That will help you get to lane so much sooner and your W cooldown is going to come up sooner when coming back to lane. Keep in mind that the W cooldown starts counting down when you place it, not when the shadow disappears. That means that if the W cooldown is 20 seconds, the shadow will last in place for 5 seconds and when it disappears your W cooldown is only going to be 15 seconds. That is very important to know and that's why Z mains often swap in the last second of W. So in the late game what you can do with Z is place your W, swap in the last second, press E, ult, press E again and you get your W back which is a pretty broken combo. For more detailed combos you can watch my other combo guides that I will link in the description below. In this section I will show you how you should play Z in each stage of the game, from level 1 to level 18. At level 1 Z is extremely weak so naturally almost any champion is going to push you under your turret. The only thing that you can do is get some minions with your Qs or try to poke the enemy a little bit when you can. At level 2 you will most likely get completely pushed under your tower so take E because it can help you CS under turret. If by any chance you are not getting pushed that hard you can take W level 2 so you can poke a bit better. Level 3 is where you can actually start doing something. You should start poking the enemy with the WEQ combo. First throw your W, then E to slow them, then see the movement of your opponent and then throw Q. That's the best way of poking. Level 4 and 5 is basically the same as level 3, just that your poke is going to get stronger and stronger because you will have more points in your Q. Level 6 and above you can actually solo kill your enemy depending on how good you were poking them earlier. If you can't find a good solo kill angle, don't worry, just continue to farm. A really good thing about Zed is that he doesn't have mana, so most likely the enemy mid laner is going to soon run out of mana, so you can stay and farm one more wave before recalling. If you have enough gold for pickaxe, buy it on your first back. If you don't have enough gold, buy long swords or boots. Your first four components should be triple long swords and pickaxe. And the first item is of course Eclipse that you want to buy. After your first bag, Zed will actually become stronger because of the extra AD that we just bought and here is where you can actually look for getting some early kills. When you get the clips, that is where you shine the most. You can win any trade easily and you can force all in place where you can get an easy lead that will help you carry when the laning phase is over. Basically you are going to have a great time until the end of the laning phase since you become super strong with Eclipse. One really good combo that will allow you to abuse the strength of Eclipse is this. You can use your WE cube to poke your enemy and you will proc Eclipse one time. Then just wait for the Eclipse cooldown to come back up and swap at the last moment of your W, all in your enemy and proc Eclipse the second time. On that way you are going to make sure you can get an easy solo kill. Roaming with Zed in early game is pretty risky actually, so I would recommend you to roam only when you know for sure that you are going to get something good from it like 2 kills. Usually when the laning phase is over you want to go to side lane. If your team needs you, you can just join them with teleport. If they don't need you, just press your side lanes and if you can get the secondary turret, that's so huge since it gives you tons of gold. The way you want to play teamfights with Zed is to basically use your WEQ plus auto attack combo on just one guy to kill him or make him very low. Look at this Lucian for example, I didn't even need to ult him to kill him. And now I do the same thing, first I WQ but Nami got away by flashing and then I just ulted. 
That's basically the most consistent way of approaching any team fight that will lead to successful plays. The way that you want to position in team fights is to approach it from where the enemy team doesn't expect you. Here I was split from my team and I created a clutch point for the enemy team. They didn't see me coming so it was an easy kill on Jenna with just WEQ. Then I ulted Smolder and finished him off too. After that I had another W to burst Garen down as well. From that point on I just waited for my W to come back up again so I can kill Kartus. And then the last one was Vladimir. And that's how you can carry fights and win games with Zed basically. In this section of the video I will tell you some generally good concepts that you can use with Zed to win more games. Zed is a champion that can go super deep in the enemy territory unlike many other champions. The reason why is because you can escape quickly with your W Shadow if you need to. So going in the enemy jungle can be a super good spot to get some easy kills. In the very late game when you can't buy any more items always buy Elixir of Iron instead of Elixir of Wrath. The reason why is because survivability is more important than damage since you have a lot of damage anyways with your full build. Knowing how to efficiently use TP on Z is a game changer. Whenever you see a situation that could maybe work with TP, don't go for it. The reason why is because you never want to force anything with TP plays, because a lot of the time you will waste your TP or even end up dying. You want to be sure that you will get something from that TP, so be patient and use it in the right time. One of the most important concepts of playing with Zed is actually hitting your WEQ, especially in laning phase while poking. If you hit more Qs in lane, you're gonna get more prior, you're gonna uh, get more kill pressure and you can even win the whole laning phase and even the game just by hitting more Qs. Uh, when I was coaching my students, they do simple mistakes that can definitely be fixed if they knew some of the uh, tips and tricks that I'm gonna talk about today. Okay, so the first uh, tip that I'm gonna give you is obviously the angle of the of your W shadow. So a mistake is to put uh, your W shadow in front of the enemy if you wanna poke him. Like that's that's just not good. Um, it's the reason why is because it's so much harder uh, to hit your Qs if you put it on that angle. And uh, wait, if I if I refresh my cooldown, I'm gonna show you. So. If you, if you do it like that, it's so much harder than if you do it, for example, um, on the side of your enemies, like here. Here it's so much easier to hit double Qs, you know, if you put it on side. It doesn't have to be like completely on side, it, it can be a little bit on the side and it's still like a lot easier um, than um, it was if it's in front. So care about the angle of the shadow for sure. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna show you is probably the most important thing about hitting WEQs is a lot of players do WQE instead of WEQ which is wrong you know it's it's completely wrong you can't you know expect to hit more Qs if you do it like this you know first throw your Qs then E because then you can't utilize the slow the whole point of WEQ is to WE slow them and then throw shurikens um, and so when I when I was watching my students like play, the biggest mistake that they do is they do it too fast. So basically, uh, there's no point in slowing your enemies if you do it too fast. Like, uh, you know, they just throw it like as fast as they can, and that's not always good. Sometimes it's good to be fast, but in most cases, it's just um, you know there's no point in, in to just trying to hit it as fast as you can, you know. Um, the best thing that you can do is uh, have a little bit of a delay, you know, just W, E, Q, wait and then Q, you know, just to see where they're going, like that millisecond can really help you, because, because your E uh, is gonna slow them for 1.5 seconds, that's actually pretty long time, you can wait even one second and they're still gonna be slowed. Um, so basically what I recommend you to do is not to poke like this, to instantly throw your Qs, but to have a little bit of a delay, just to see where they're going, like WEQ and then like this. 
you know. So basically when you slow them, they're gonna maybe try to dodge like here and then you throw in front. Or maybe they're gonna try to dodge here and then you throw on the side. Maybe they're gonna go back and then you're gonna go throw it like that. So basically just uh, WE, wait like a second and then Q. That's how you do it. Um, and of course the best way to do it is to throw it on the side of them. That's the easiest way to hit. Um, also what I noticed when I was like um, coaching my students is they don't use it as often as they should. So you're in laning phase and you're CSing minions and you have your WE queue up and your energy bar is completely full. And they just don't even wanna try to poke. It's like, bro, just go and poke and do your thing. And then the next time when it comes up, do it again, you know? Just don't waste time um, just sitting there CSing with her trying to poke. That's a mistake. Um, basically, whenever you have it, you should use it, you know. I have like uh, people who I coach who who sit there for like 15 seconds in lane having their W and they don't use it, which is a complete mistake. Uh, when you look at the whole laning phase duration, maybe it's like 10 minutes, uh, you know, maybe they would throw it like uh, seven, eight time average, but they could have thrown it like, I don't know, maybe like nine or 10 times. So one or two uh, W EQs, they could have thrown it more if they just paid attention to their cooldown. So yeah, always pay attention to your cooldown and try to poke as much as you can. And don't be afraid if you don't hit two Qs. Like, you know, if your enemy is just too good to dodge it, don't be afraid of that, you know? Just hitting sometimes one Q is good enough. You don't always have to hit two Qs, but you always have to try to poke no matter what happens, you know? But yeah, just keep in mind that you should WEQ, wait a little bit and then Q. Of course, if you wait too much, they're gonna, you know, walk away and then you're gonna miss. So it's not good to wait too much, but try to, you know, try to wait a little bit before you Q and on that way you might hit more Qs. Uh, against champions who have dash, for example, Katarina or, you know, other champions like that, maybe even Yasuo, who knows. Uh, you can throw your WEQ and then wait for Katarina to dash, for example, here and then throw it. But if you rush your Qs, what is gonna happen? You're gonna WEQ and she's gonna swap instantly and then you're gonna miss because you didn't wait. So never rush your Qs. You know, it's good to sometimes have a little bit of delay because use your slow to your advantage. That's why we do it WEQ instead of WQE. In this section I will talk about my in-game settings that I use for playing as Z, so I hope that it can help you guys as well. So first off, let's talk about my mouse speed. Uh, my mouse speed is actually 1600 dpi. I feel like that's like the optimal uh, mouse speed for me to move the camera and also to kind of be precise with my shurikens, you know. Um, if it's like too fast, it's kind of hard to be precise, but if it's too slow, then it's like you know, your reaction time is definitely like slower. So I like it on 1.6k. Uh, um, and now the second thing that I, uh, that I want to show you guys is first my game settings. Uh, my mouse speed in the game is like 50, usual stuff, everything is on 50. And if you want to see the other stuff and copy it, you can do it. Uh, when it comes to interface, actually, that's pretty interesting. I like to keep my uh, HUD scale at zero because I feel like if it's like high, like um, if you put it at high numbers, like it can distract you from like the game because it's just too big, you know? Sometimes you can like accidentally like not see something here or stuff like this. So at zero, I like it the best because I can still see everything and you know, it uh, shows me a wider, bigger screen. And my minimap scale scale is usually like 34, I think that's the optimal minimap for me, but it really depends on your monitor size and your resolution, but that's what I like the most. Um, yeah, and if you want to copy, you can copy all of that stuff. What I also do is I use minutes and seconds. I feel like if you just put seconds, it can be confusing uh, because, I mean, when you flash, it's like 300 seconds, you know? Uh, you rather want to see minutes and seconds, so when you flash it's like, oh yeah, five minutes, it's definitely like easier to see. Uh, 
And yeah, you can copy all of those settings if you want. I didn't change that much here. Uh, when it comes to sound, um, I don't hear the music volume. I know like that some people like to hear music volume while they're playing, that's their preference, but in my opinion, I just don't like any music, you know, playing in the background when I'm playing. And the other stuff is like pretty low, I like to keep it low. When it comes to video, I, um, I have a pretty good graphics card, so I put it on very high everything. I think it looks just the best. And I kept it at 200 FPS. But this is actually pretty interesting because I like to... Uh, my, my brightness would be too... Like, it would be too bright for me, you know, if I put it like that. It's just too bright, so I keep it at 41. That's like the, the golden for me. Also, I upped the color contrast, color gamma and color level to 55. I think that's just the optimal for me. Uh, when it comes to hotkeys, so that's the most important part. So, I put everything on uh, smartcast, I mean quickcast. And I also don't use those, like never use those. I feel like that, you know, those things can just, um, quickcast indicators can just confuse you even more. So, I, I don't use them. So, I put everything on smartcast, but that's gonna mean that I can like combo quick, you know. For example, if I spawn like a dummy here, um, you know, you know, I can just combo it pretty quickly with everything that I have and that's how I play. But, one important thing uh, that can help you playing Zed and other champions, what they do is actually... I have normal cast as well. And how do I achieve normal cast? Um, it's the same shit as this, the only thing is I press shift, you know. So that's how I achieve uh, the normal cast. So if I uh, press Q, it's like this, but if I press shift plus Q, it's gonna show me the thing. And the uh, only way that I activate it is to click. Now that I click, it goes off. Why that can be useful on that, you might ask, like, why is that useful? Well, um, I mean, look at this, you know. Sometimes you, you wanna see your W like max range, so it can help you like cross a wall like this, for example, boom, and you cross it. Pretty easy, right? But sometimes like what can happen if you're not doing that, sometimes you, you wanna cross a wall and then you're just like boop and then you boom, you're stuck in a wall, which sucks. You know, you never want to be like that. So that can be useful to see the range of your W. Also, like if you're a beginner Z player, you can like use it to see the range of your ultimate as well. And um, yeah, and also like to aim uh, Q sometimes like it can help you, you know, especially if you have like three Qs, so you can, you know, aim them better. But mostly for W, I would say. And yeah, that's would be it when it comes to those settings. Uh, what I also use, of course, is um, I use often player movement. And what I use is attack move on H. I think it's usually on H. And I often use like player stop position on S. So, um, you know, sometimes you just press S and your character stops doing whatever he was doing. Let's say out attack, just press S, stops. It's pretty useful to have that. And also what's useful is to show, the, show your attack range. Sometimes when you're CSing, you need that A button that can help you like show your range, you know. Especially when playing rain champions, if you're ever gonna play. But yeah, that would basically be, um, you know, all of my settings. I think the most important definitely are the trick with the normal cast that I use. And uh, another trick, trick that can probably help you if you put your HUD scale to zero. Because I feel like if I played like this, for example, so some people just prefer it like this. It just, you know, like for example, if the enemy is here, like let's see on the bottom of my screen and I like, you know, do sh shit and then like, oh shit, it's like kind of hard to see, you know, like it's not so easy when it comes to zero, then it's like, okay, now, now I can see, you know, now I can see what I'm doing here. Uh, so that's pretty important in my opinion. And yeah, also use this so you can always cross a wall, never get uh, stuck in a wall if you use that one, so you see, um, you know, when you can cross it, especially like walls like those ones, 
are pretty ha hard to cross. You can you can fuck up easily on that wall, but if you have this, it can really like help you. For example, you can see, oh yeah, I can do this, I, I can do this. But for example, if you don't have, and sometimes you're like, oh yeah, I can do this, and then boom, well, you can't, you know? Um, so yeah, that's basically everything from my settings for those who ask. Okay, welcome BZ to the video. I'm glad uh, to have you as a special guest. BZ is basically a challenger um, Z um, player from EU West. He has been consistently challenger for many years and he has been one of the best Z players in the world, if I do say so myself. And he's also my good friend, so I'm glad to have you here in this video. So welcome BZ. Hey man, I appreciate you having me here. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm gonna ask you some uh, a couple of questions and you can uh, answer them. Uh, I think it's gonna be some interesting questions about Z specifically. So mm -hmm. my first question is uh, this: What is the best champion to ban when you are playing Z? What, in your opinion? So for me, I mean honestly, I wish I could ban loads of champs, not just one champ. But yeah, uh, at the you. moment, I just ban whatever is meta on mid. So. Mm -hmm. Right now, the most common mid lane picks are all basically shit matchups for Z. Tristana is a shit matchup for Z. Yeah, you lose I, I banned Tristana. Before nine minutes. I banned Tristana. Tristana is a really good ban, yeah. That was my ban, but I just alternate bans, to be honest. LeBlanc also a good ban. LeBlanc, um, yeah. very impressive early game, very hard to kill, and she snowballs really well as well. Um, plus, when next patch hits, when Electro gets buffed, this champ will 100% be my power ban. Really? Electro. Yeah, I feel that she's going. Wait, you said Leblanc is gonna be. Yeah, she'll be my permanent mm -hmm. for from next patch for I sure. Also, like she um, she used to abuse first strike a lot, right? Leblanc, when first strike was kind of broken. Mm, yes, I mean last patch before the first round of yeah, people were just spamming the first strike uh, variant of her, but I don't think that's the best. Uh, I mean, the mm -hmm. electric will for sure be her best. She'll be very very impressive with that. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, what's his metal man? Trinity is almost picked quite often, and that was also another uh, match that's just disgusting, right? You just mm -hmm. kick the tower, he ignores you. You can't harass him out of lane. So, what would you say is the best ban right now in this meta? Maybe Tristana or? I, if I would say overall, I would only ban the Blanc. I think. Mm -hmm, that makes the, sense. The thing with Tristana, yeah, you lose your tower. Yeah, it's annoying early, but at one point, though, if you get an item or two, you will be killing it. Like you can't sign him as you said, right? The Blanc yeah. can. Yeah, that's like, yeah, it's LeBlanc is early. hard, okay. You have to endure it. Yeah, LeBlanc's also very passive. But yeah, I think LeBlanc for sure though. Just because of the fact that after mm -hmm, an item mm -hmm. or two, you will, you will kill Tristan inside. You can sign to Tristan. Okay, LeBlanc is still one shot you from sense. far right. Uh, next question is, um, what is your favorite combo with Z? My favorite combo? Well, yeah. Like right now or like yeah, throughout the years? I think right now right now my favorite combo right now uh, honestly one thing i like to do right now in all yeah. of the matchups is just buffer my cues so when i ult in i queue immediately right oh yeah yeah i it's, know it's, it's like the instant cues like, like, right yeah like mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. matchups like um, i don't know ori ori will charm me straight away yeah, but i yeah, feel yeah. so satisfying that you can just get the cues up before and just kill it before she tries to do anything yeah a lot of champions like uh, when you're landing, they try to uh, CC you, but they, yeah, exactly. they themselves are standing still, so it's kind of easy to hit triple shurikens when they're doing that. Yeah, you can obviously buff your Qs right before the CC, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like it's always satisfying to do that, and it's always uh, catches them off guard as well because obviously no one expects it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. I agree, that combo is very fun, it's very um, satisfying. Yep, yeah. okay, next question is. Uh, is there any trick you uh, you know about Z that would help many people? Like maybe climb with Z. Like, is there any like specific tip uh, tip that you have? Maybe something that any you realized tips? recently. It can be um, anything, like even runes, like build, um, you know, mechanics, like whatever. Uh, I mean, I will say this overall, right? not just for Z. I think by far the biggest step you could have to um, learn Z or even to uh, improve at this game, right? Is consistency. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily just consistency, it's also to watch better players than you. So, like, if you're someone that just picked up Z 
and you're obviously wanting to improve and learn on and find out what to do on Z. Watch a better player, right? Watch uh, one trick, watch someone that's got the champ, copy what they do, ask questions, watch their stream, watch their YouTube videos, you know? That's yeah, the way. Yeah, I agree, I agree. That's what I would do if I was uh, trying to learn the champ. What? Obviously, Z has so much diversity, right? Yeah. yeah. For you, uh, what is consistency for you? Like, if if you had to dis uh, describe it the best to somebody, what would you say consistency actually is in League or on Z? To be able to uh, CS at a good number in mm -hmm, most of mm -hmm. your games, to not die so often. Okay, okay. And to basically not be behind, right? Like to always be on that that um, what do you call it? That slow, basically, as in you're just neutral, you're scaling, you're not mm -hmm. doing anything bad, right? You're just, you know, not flipping anything. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah, basically still... the opposite of consistency, yeah? Just like not sometimes doing, doing really nothing, get you behind. So, yeah, sometimes like doing nothing and just farming is better than doing something bad, like just dying and shit like that. Yeah, 100%. Uh, okay, okay. Next thing is actually like a really interesting thing that I wanted to ask you uh, all the time mm -hmm. is uh, I saw many pro players and content creators being really mad when you uh, kill them actually with Z. <laughs> uh, why do you think they react like that? Um, so the most recent one was Nemesis, right? Yeah, I yeah, yeah. killed Nemesis and uh, yeah, he was crying about Z after that. He was like, buddy Z for me. Yeah, game. yeah, he's really um, mad. I think he thinks <laughs> that Zed is like kind of broken or something. Zed experience. Probably Zed for the rest of the game. The rest of the day, I don't know. If, I, if a challenger player loses to a diamond player on a champ that shouldn't... It's funny, no, he doesn't right? think it's broken. It's, uh, he doesn't think that at all. Or, or do you think he just... An, uh, it's just the fact that his champ is annoying. Yeah, oh, the see, champ sorry. is annoying. So, he mentioned the clip as well. I can uh, try and send you the clip after. Okay, he, okay, okay. Um, Mentions the fact that the champ does nothing in lane, which is true. Zed can't do much in lane, right? He's obviously just there to um, get to his item oh, before he can I actually see, do see, things. See. And um, once he gets his item, obviously Zed becomes way, way stronger, right? Like once Zed gets the mm -hmm, clips, for mm -hmm. example, Zed spikes very, yeah, very hard. Yeah, when you get the clips, it's a different game. Yeah. So in that clip as well, um, obviously he was annoyed about the fact that I, I mean, the champ basically does nothing in lane, and then. I don't know, you just show up inside and then we'll just kill you, right? Yeah, He yeah. doesn't like that fact. So, yeah, naturally this champ is annoying, right? For that reason. As in, does nothing in lane, gets a few items, and it'll be online, and people hate that fact, right? Yeah, yeah. Because again, true. Zed is a champ. I mean, yeah, you can punish the champ a lot, but at the same time, you can't also interact with Zed that easily, because, I mean, mm -hmm. he's a fake melee, isn't he? He's basically a ranged assassin. Yeah, but I'm not gonna lie, it's fun to see when you outplay people and they just get so mad and start talking shit about Zed and shit like that. <laughs> I think What's the Yasuo main, yeah. I'm not sure how he's called uh, anymore, One but... Pro, yeah. Yeah, he was like starting to shit about Zed, like, this is so unfair, <laughs> he just used his W or something like that. But you played it very well and really there's nothing to um nothing else to say. I was with the exhaust and he used W in uh, before the fight. So his W was on cooldown, came up again instantly after he just used it. And I exhausted him. Fucking ridiculous champ. Would you say that TP is like mandatory <laughs> every game? It doesn't matter what, you just have to take TP every game. So when I uh, coach people, I mm -hmm. always recommend whoever I coach to... If they're above master basically, I would say to take TP. But if you're below master, if you're like diamond or below, Mm -hmm. I think Ignite every game is fine. That's interesting. Because, um, you should be able to still kill most players uh, below this, like, ELO, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I think having, if you're learning to play with TP in this, uh, I mean, below Diamond, you'll make so many bad habits. And also, another thing is, people do not utilize TP properly either, right? Mm -hmm, yeah, so I feel yeah. like the best way to learn and move forward with the game, if you're trying to pick up Z or learn Z, just get Ignite, get used to killing, get like your limit sorted right and once you get into games where this champ actually can't kill anymore and you're actually struggling to get solo kills then you can start looking at the tp right to obviously play to scale that's a very good tip actually it's a very good tip i like that um but past like master you, you would say like every game is like mandatory tp yeah i, mm -hmm. I almost always do tp i must say like what 
I only rarely go ignite, maybe in like snowballing matchups, like I don't know, mm -hmm. defense by a lot. Silas, for example, I go ignite. Would you, do you ever go like teleport ignite? Like for example against Silas? Um, that depends on the comp. So if the comp has no lockdown, so like any major CC, like mm -hmm. you know. If they have no major CC, then yeah, I'll go TP ignite. If they have any sort of CC though, then I would just prefer flash. I think flash is too valuable mm -hmm. in team fights. And obviously, I, I mean, yeah, I go TP almost every game. Some games I go Ignite if I want to snowball the matchup. And some games I even go Exhaust as well. Like, I don't know, into Kiana. Mm -hmm. Kiana, you can't avoid her ult. She'll just one-shot you. Or even Cleanse sometimes as well into champs like uh, Zoe, Lissandra, or Lux. You get hit by one ability, you're basically dead, right? Yeah. So if you have Cleanse, you just nullify the entire champion and you can just punish. Mm -hmm. um, okay, my, my question is this. This is actually an interesting question. Um, do you think it's possible to get challenger with Zed every season? I mean, you've done it, right? But would you say uh, it's possible to anyone? Or would you say like, you know, Zed, sometimes it's just so weak, it's not possible to reach challenger? So I'll answer this from my own POV, right? Yeah. I've gone challenger with Zed, with Zed ever since I've started playing him uh, properly, mm -hmm. since, what, season 11, I think now? Yeah. Uh, no matter the champ state, I've always come with the champ, right? Like when Hydra got removed, people were crying how oh, this champ is so weak, so bad. I still got challenged with the champ, right? Yeah. So I do think, I mean, I picked actually the season. So even though Zed is probably his worst state right now, since years now, I still got a new pick, right? I got yeah. to 1250 LP rank 18 on the ladder playing Zed. Only yeah, basically. That's crazy. So, um, yeah, I do think it's definitely possible to hit Challenger. Maybe you gain past Challenger is uh, a bit iffy. <laughs> obviously but yeah to get to challenge with that 100 percent that is definitely possible mm -hmm. if you go enough for the jump i would agree i would agree it's really possible um so my follow-up question is actually would you say that zed is one of the best champions to climb in solo queue with uh, in terms of like his strength uh, and also like the fun of playing him you know um honestly uh, yeah i do think so um Obviously, the what's the average play? The average play is like silver gold, right? Yeah. If you genuinely enjoy the champ, you're not handicapping yourself by playing Zed, basically. Like, for most people that are going to watch this video as well, right? Yeah, yeah. You're not handicapping yourself by playing this champ. Like, this champ is good. This champ is not bad. This champ is strong. It's just, once you play into like actual pro plays or whatever, this champ will suffer. Well, obviously, mm -hmm. that's just the rare niche, right? So basically, it's not good in pro play, but in solo queue, you can have a lot of fun and a lot of success if you really get good with him. 100%. I mean, it's not worth the time investment, right? To, for a pro to learn Z. Like, it will never be worth the investment. Yeah. Well, yeah, for solo queue, for sure. I mean, this champ, they didn't send in front. You have so much outplay potential. You have so many choices to do with this champ. You, I mean, everyone loves to outplay that opponent, right? It's yeah. just one of the most satisfying things to do in this game. So would you say that um, the time investing into learning Z is worth it at the end in solo queue? Again, I'll, I'll answer this from my own POV. Mm -hmm. um, I spent a lot of years playing Z. Do I regret it, though? No, honestly. Like, um... Again, this champ is silly fun to me, right? No matter how bad this champ is, I will still play this champ because I just enjoy <laughs> this champ, right? Yeah, the champion is um, just so fun, even you can't stop. It, it feels, yeah, it does feel sad when you see a random guy just first time just start a mid and do so much more because this yeah. champ is just better. Yeah, just, just uh, like, but that's, but that's, meta. that's, meta. that's just, yeah, it is how it is. That's how it's always been, though, right? Yeah. But uh, no, I don't regret it. Like, um, it's like what you just said, right? How I made clips of this, like um, streamers, for example, and they cry about my champ. It uh, puts a smile on my face when I see someone crying about Zed. Yeah. Well, one of the yeah. supposed worst champs in the uh, high elo is making players that are playing meta cry about the champ. <laughs> That's quite I mean, you know what's funny? It's like Zed is historically one of the champions that's never been like too broken or broken at all. Like, I mean, when you look at pro play and people still cry about him being too strong and shit like that, it's like really funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'd love when uh, someone that plays Tristana, someone that plays Trinity or whatever is crying about Zed, like, yeah, come on, man. But I think um, when you play Zed and actually get to high elo, you should definitely be really proud of yourself. For example, I know that a lot of uh, streamers respect you busy, um, like uh, Agorin and other uh, streamers, because I think it's really impressive. I mean, playing champion that is not really good in challenger and still uh, having so much success uh, on him, 
It's way more impressive than being challenger with Tristana and Trindamer, right? I mean, when you challenge her with Zed, you yeah. should be more proud of yourself. It's just like a better feeling. Like, I would rather be master with Zed than challenger with Tristana. So, yeah. And 100%. it's also, like, more fun to play Zed than Tristana. <laughs> That's for sure. The just results, though, right? That's how price Zed players, to be yeah, fair. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you want LP, go pick those champs, man. What can I say? <laughs> or, hey, fuck that. Yeah, yeah. True, true. Okay, that's everything for today. Thank you, Busy, for being in the video. And, um... Oh, fuck, I screwed it up. <laughs> Let me do it again. <laughs> okay, that's everything that I have to ask you for today. Thank you for being in this video, Busy. And uh, you can shout out yourself if you want uh, here. Hey, man, I appreciate you having me. It's been nice talking to you. Uh, just to clarify who I am, I am uh, the only challenge on on EUS with Zed right now. I stream on Twitch, Twitch TV PZ and the EUS. I do use the videos as well. Basically educational content right towards Zed. And I also coach, so if you're interested in learning Zed, hey man, check out my stream or come by my YouTube videos. And I'll be sure to help. Okay, nice nice to have you, nice to have you. And good luck on your streams. Have a good one, sir. Be nice to you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. And that's everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and maybe learned something new from all of the things I was talking about. Believe me, there is much more to talk about, but I will keep it for some other time to not make this video longer than it already is. I make various matchup guides for Zed and way more on my Patreon page, so if you are interested in that, go check it out, or if you just want to support me and what I'm doing, I would be really honored for that. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you next time.